This is the Tonex One from IK Multimedia. Honestly, I don't love it, so let's talk about it. Chris with B Minus Demos here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're new, which honestly most of you are based on the channel analytics, thanks for coming to hang out with me. Those of you that are returning, I genuinely appreciate it. It means the world to me. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe, like the video, share the video, turn on the notification bell, uh, leave me a comment, and let me know if you have a dog. My dog is laying right here, uh, and she's probably going to start barking soon. So uh, yeah, just let me know if you deal with that. Let's go ahead and jump into this. In early 2023, when the original Tonex pedal came out, I thought it was really cool. I wasn't necessarily in the market for something like this, but of course I watched all the videos that came out and I really, really dug it. But it just wasn't something that I ever needed to pull the trigger on. Then when the Tonex One came out with a sub $200 price tag, I was like, okay, that makes sense for me. I think a lot of guitar and bass players were in the same boat when they were looking at this. It's inexpensive, it's powerful, it's got a really small footprint, and yeah, it's limited, but not really in ways that were meaningful to me. At least not that I thought. What excited me most about this largely gets glossed over in a lot of reviews that I've seen. I love the idea of having a standalone amp and cab solution that doesn't require me to run a bunch of plugins anytime I'm doing recording. Now, I don't have a shiny, blazing fast computer. In fact, it's at this point probably five or six years old, and it was never really meant to do this kind of stuff in the first place. So even stacking just a few plugins can really wreak havoc on my machine. So in addition to not having to run a bunch of plugins, the Tonex One can be used as an interface, which to me made it great running into my iPad recording straight into Logic. Well, it does work like that. I've recorded all of the sounds that you guys are going to hear straight into my iPad using this as the interface. That relatively minor convenience is outweighed by the number of shortcomings that this has. And most of those shortcomings begin and end with the Tonex software. maybe the only UI I've ever used that I enjoyed less than Tonex was NAMM. Almost every aspect of the Tonex software is clunky and weird, and it kind of reminds me of older versions of Android OS. I just repeatedly found myself going, wait, what? And like pretty much every other IK multimedia project, the iOS app is just a joke. They're all bad. This one's no exception. Despite a lot of the clunkiness and weirdness that I'll get into a little later, it isn't all bad. I like a lot of the advanced parameters. Uh, I like being able to adjust the presence and the depth. Uh, to me, especially when you're working with digital amps, those really kind of help create some dimension. And when you add to that just a little bit of room reverb that keeps it from sounding so dead, those are three features that, to me, can make or break a digital system. Honestly though, my two biggest issues were the models that come from IK and the captures, which is like 90% of the product.
look, you guys know I don't like to be negative. And it's not often you're going to hear me say that something isn't good. But the models that come from IK Multimedia just aren't very good. A lot of the models were okay in a vacuum, but once I started adding pedals or started doing a lot of tone shaping or something like that, they just really seemed to fall apart. And when you have something like Tonocracy that's free, it doesn't make any sense for these models to be as lackluster as they are. The next thing is the captures. Now, sound-wise, the captures are the shining star of Tonex, but I don't like captures, like, at all. They're inconsistent, they aren't as tweakable, everybody records it with a different system, it always seems to act differently based on what you're doing at the moment. It's the same reason that I just really haven't vibed with Neural Amp Modeler. Add to that the fact that you may spend literally hours pouring through captures of the same amp to find one that you kind of vibe with. It just, I don't know, it doesn't work for me. I think one of the other issues for me anyhow with captures is that there are certain amps that I think I run in a way that maybe not everyone does, like the Vox AC30, where a lot of people are looking for a bright, chimey, jangly sound from an AC30 because that's what they've been known for since the 60s or whatever. That's not really what I go for. I like when it's a little darker, when it's a little grittier, and the AC30 can totally do that. But when you're working with captures instead of a model, you just don't have the same flexibility. For me, I'll take a model over a capture every day of the week, even if ultimately the overall quality may not be quite as good, the flexibility that it's going to give me is going to make up for that, for me anyhow. Bit of a sidebar, I also don't like the limited version of Tonex that you get with this product. Can you imagine buying like the lesser expensive iPhone, like maybe you went with the iPhone 14 instead of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and you got like a light version of iOS, people would lose their minds. I also had some issues when I had mine come in with it not registering. It just kept telling me that either the uh, serial number didn't exist or that it already existed as a registered product. And it took me several days going back and forth with IK Multimedia's uh, customer service team to get that fixed. I've never experienced that with any kind of product before. And while most of my complaints are about the Tonex software, I do want to get into what might be my only complaint about the physical product, which isn't that it doesn't have MIDI, which is kind of an absurd ask, given how small this is and the price point that it comes in at. For me, it's the knobs and the knob layout. Uh, I would like to see what I guess maybe would be called like non-linear knobs or like maybe like infinite spin, something kind of like that. Because the Tonex one gives you the ability to bounce back and forth between two presets, and within each preset you have a primary and an alternate set of functions, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me to have the knobs represent a certain value making even small adjustments becomes kind of a hassle because say I'm in the uh, primary mode and I'm trying to adjust the volume, but then I also need to adjust the gate. So I got into the alternate mode and then I need to go back and adjust the base mid and treble, but then I need to go back. And now I have to remember where I had it set before so I can remember how to get back there. So I can remember how to go up or down from there. Like it, it shouldn't be that way. Something like an infinite spin knob, which is what I'm calling it. I don't know if that's what it's called, but like an infinite spin knob doesn't necessarily represent where you are in the sweep. Instead, it takes where you are and moves you either up or down in either direction. And it makes so much more sense when you have a form factor like this, where you have so much like multifunctionality for each of the knobs. Now, maybe that's too much to ask for this form factor and for this price, but I mean, some people are complaining that it doesn't have MIDI or a screen, so I really think that's a little more reasonable.
So is this product bad? No, not really. It's not bad. It really isn't. Uh, I, I could go on and on about things that I don't like about it, but I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. It, it, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. If you're someone who likes capture technology, this is cool. If you're someone who's already in the Tonex ecosystem and maybe you just want to build a really small, really portable, compact fly rig, again, this is really cool. But honestly, it's not the everyone should buy this solution that I thought it was going to be. And it definitely isn't for me. Truthfully, I've spent the last handful of weeks trying to force myself to play this enough that I could just come up with some solid opinions about it other than I don't like this. But it just, it always felt like a chore to sit down and play. It wasn't fun. There was nothing inspiring about it. I didn't sit down and enjoy it and get lost in playing it. It just was kind of a hassle. So that's it. Those are my thoughts on the IK Multimedia Tone X1. Uh, I know that this is already a pretty polarizing product, um, but to me, most of the downfalls to this have very little to do with the physical one, the Tone X1. Most of the downfalls to this are Tone X. Uh, as a software, as a plug-in, whatever you want to, however you're going to use it. To me, Tonex is the biggest deterrent to switching over to the Tonex ecosystem for me. stuff i don't know man it, maybe this works great for you and you love it and that's awesome i'm super glad that you found a solution for you but uh i had to be honest with you guys i didn't even want to make this video i spent weeks avoiding making this because i couldn't find enough good stuff to say about it i couldn't even figure out how i wanted to talk about it i don't like to be negative but i just don't have a lot of good things to say about this anyhow look i hope you guys have an amazing week i'll see you later